Hey everybody, welcome to another Render Hub video. Today we're going to go over how to create custom morphs in DAS Studio. For those of you who don't already know this, morphs are the way that you can create custom shaping for any object in DAS Studio, typically a Genesis character. So if you want to make the character look a certain way, be a certain height, have a certain muscularity, you can do that by creating a custom morph and then you can dial forward and backward how much that shape is applied to the character. Today we're going to be going over exactly how to do that and some of the common pitfalls that you have to watch out for when creating these morphs. I'd like to start by explaining some basic concepts using the sphere that's on the screen. Most of you already know that all geometry in 3D consists of three things, vertices, edges, and faces. What some of you may not know is that vertices in 3D are indexed. That means they have a numeric value that acts as a unique identifier for each individual vertex on the model. The reason why these indexes are so important when talking about morphs is because DAS Studio uses these indexes to make sure the vertices move to the right position when your morph is applied. So if this vertex right here has to go somewhere up here when you apply your morph, it's this index identifier that makes sure it goes into the right position. The reason why it's important to understand that is because if you do anything to this model when creating the morph to cause the indexes to reorder or delete some of them, you essentially break the chain and the morph will not work when you bring it into DAS Studio. So let's say I wanted to morph this sphere into the shape of a pear. I have the pear shape imported as wireframe geometry just to illustrate how this works. So since I created the pear shape from the sphere itself, the number of vertices match and the indexes are in the right position relative to one another. That means when this vertex needs to go up here to become the pear shape, those numbers match and it knows that it should go there. Meaning if this vertex is number 37, where it has to go on the pair is number 37. So when we apply the morph, you'll see that the sphere smoothly finds its way and all the vertices know where they need to go. If for some reason the vertexes get mixed up or out of order or the geometry changes, then either the import of the morph is going to fail or even if it does import successfully, you might get really weird results. I can show you an example of this. Let's put the shape back to the sphere. And this is an example of bad geometry. And as you can see, it just completely messes up. So the important takeaway from all that is that when you export this model into whatever software you're going to use to create your morph shape, you should not do anything that's going to alter the vertex order like remove faces or use any mirror modifiers because that will cause the vertex order to become out of sync with the original model that you're going to apply the morph against back in DAS Studio. Now that we have a basis, let's go ahead and get started creating our morph for Genesis 8 Female. Before we get started, there is something we have to do. We have to delete her eyelashes. This is because the eyelashes in Genesis 8 are a separate object. Exporting her with her eyelashes will cause the morph to fail when you try to import it back in. So this is very important. We just delete the eyelashes and we're ready to get started. There are a couple of things we have to do to prepare our model before we export. The first thing that we have to do, and this is very important, is we have to set our mesh resolution to base. If we forget to do this, then you will not be able to re-import the model after you've done your shaping. You also want to make sure that the navel is set to zero. If you don't do this, then it's going to apply the navel twice if somebody uses your morph and then applies the navel. This should be a separate independent control and you don't want it to be part of your morph. So now that we are at base and the navel is, is turned off, we're ready to export our Genesis female. Now I'll be doing all of our shaping using external software. For this video, I'll be using Blender. But you can do shaping from within DAS Studio before you do the export if you wish. To export, you go to File, Export. Let's give our file a name and hit Save. Now this part is really critical. 
You want to select a preset from the export options. I suggest using Poser. Don't change anything here. And what's important is when you import this back in, you have to also import using the same preset. This ensures that your scaling and other options match on the way in as they were on the way out. This is really important. So now let's import our model for shaping. Go to File, Import, OBJ. Here's our model. Now this part is very specific to Blender, but it's an important part of the process. Blender, by default, will try to split my model by object and group, effectively changing the geometry and changing the vertex order. If the software you're using for shaping will do something like this upon importing, you have to make sure to deselect those options. So for Blender, we're going to uncheck split by object and split by group, hit import, and here's our Genesis model ready for shaping. So now I'm going to do some basic sculpting to our character so you can see the change when we import her back into Das Studio as a morph. I'm going to make the hips a little bit larger and make her waist and chest a little bit smaller so we can see the changes when they get applied. Obviously the sky's the limit as to what you can do here and once you have the shape that you're going for you just want to export her back out as an OBJ file. We're going to call this file out and that's ready to be brought back into Das Studio as a morph. So now here we are back in Das Studio and we're going to load our morph file into Genesis 8 female. Make sure to select Genesis 8 and you want to click on this icon to open the Morph Loader Pro. Once you have this window open, you want to click Choose More Files, select our out file that we created and hit open. And remember, very important to make sure that the preset is set to the same preset that you selected when exporting. In our case, it was Poser. Hit Accept. We didn't get any errors here. We want to hit OK. And under the Parameters tab, you'll see here we have Morph Loader. And here's our Out Morph. If I slide this bar up forward, you'll see it applies the shape that we created in Blender. This is how we create a morph in Daz Studio. So this morph should work perfectly just as it is, but there are some parameter settings I'd like to go over. Come down to your morph, click on the gear, and go to parameter settings, and you'll see we get this window, and there's some options in here. The first one is the name. We want to name it something that makes more sense. Let's call it body shape. The next thing is the path. The path is where this morph lives when you select your character and go to shaping. Since we did changes to the shape of the body, I would put this under actor, full body, people, real world. You can also give your morph a color to make it a little bit more unique. And this will change the slider bar color for your morph. Also here you got a min and max. These are important. The max set to 100 means this morph can be applied 100%. The default setting for min is negative 100, meaning it essentially can be applied in reverse. Typically you want to set this to zero, meaning either the morph is not applied or it's applied 100%. Let's hit accept and save these settings. And if you notice our morph goes away. Well if you go to shaping, You'll see here it is in shaping, and it's applied 100%. If we scale it all the way down, it's zero. And now we have a morph that can be applied and removed from our character. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found the video helpful. And check back for more how-to videos brought to you by RenderHub.